Hey, what's up guys? Memo here in CNS. Memo here in CNS. Memo here from CNS Journal. Hope everyone's doing good. Uh, today's video, we're gonna be doing depths. Here in Hawaii, um, there's a couple of finishes that are mainly used that we do. Depths is one of them. It's direct exterior finish system. Uh, this is the house we're at. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. Uh, today's weather was actually pretty good. Windy and a lot of overcast, so perfect for plaster. But uh, yeah, enjoy. Oh, our shirts came in, so if you won from the previous contest, I'll finally be shipping out the shirts and the hat. Uh, but anyways, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Aloha. We're gonna put finish on part of the house today, but if you're not uh, familiar with the way that plaster here in Hawaii goes, let me give you a quick rundown. So here's a little mock-up that I like to carry in the truck. Uh, essentially, this is called EFIS. EFIS. Uh, this particular mock-up is from Pyrex. I personally prefer the Stowe products, uh, the yellow buckets. That primer, this primer is a lot easier to handle, less sticky, less drag lines. Uh, overall, just a nicer product to deal with. But um, I was able to get this sample from my supplier from Pyrex, so I carry it around. Anyways, so EFIS is, what that stands for is Exterior Insulated Finish System. So essentially, there is a couple of options here. What is mainly used here in Hawaii is wood framing. You have the plywood, some type of Tyvex, and then you get the foam. And on top of the foam, the cement, two coats. First coat, you embed the mesh. Second coat, you hide the mesh. After that, you get a primer. Um, we use the Stowe, oh, it's actually right here. Stowe Prime Sand. So that gets rolled on like paint. It's a little, there's a little grit to it. It helps with the coverage and it just overall nicer finish with a fine sand float. But anyways, on this particular house, we're not doing EFIS, we're doing DEFS, which is direct exterior finish system. So we don't use the foam. Um, when you do install the foam, you always have to make sure that your trowel concrete lines are running up that is for drainage so if water were to get behind the foam in whatever area it would always not penetrate it wouldn't puddle it just go down and away from your house you don't want to keep moisture trapped but that's a quick little rundown in this house like i mentioned we're doing depths dense glass directly applied to the sheeting with the Tyvek using rust proof screws directly applied. The bottom is going to have a casing bead. What that is, it's a bead that, that just protects the bottom and it runs up. So in the event that there's water and it splashes, it won't, it won't crawl into your wall and start to damage the inside. That gets installed on the bottom. The corners are gonna get regular 90 exterior corner bead. And you can kind of see that that was, uh, we're doing this house in stages because of the waterproofing. But uh, yeah. So tools that you're gonna require for something like this. I know it's a hot mess right now, but essentially hand tools, all you need, if you're into drywall or you do some type of drywall, this is, uh, 
knife that one of the apprentices bought rubbish so for the base coat you're gonna need a hawk and you're gonna need a solid trowel my trowel of preference Marshalltown you can see it's been put to good use running strong and um, our hawk my hawk is over here Marshalltown so yeah all you need is a hawk trowel uh, taping knives that you don't mind getting beat up and when you float you need a plastic a plastic float you'll see this in action in a little bit we're gonna be using this today and you're gonna need a one of these this is good for when you're when you apply the cement shucks I don't have it over here but when you're in between coats here it looks like we just coated it but that's just because of non-stop rain when you're in between coats uh, and you want to kind of kill the lap mark you just wet this little the uh, sponge and it kind of rubs it off you can make it nice but yeah you need a one of these floats uh, if you want you can have a margin it's always good and then a little paintbrush for the fine tuning but uh, other than that and scaffolding and a solid corner trowel for the corners to clean them up and you're good to go um, plaster is more of a it's all hand applied so there's not a lot of there's no automatic tools or anything besides the drill it's all hands stuff that you kind of use already if you're doing drywall so yeah you don't need too much to get started just the basics um, tool wise and then maybe a staple and some snips for all the corner bead but the bulk I mean even with that said out of the three trades that we do which is drywall plastering and taping uh, plastering requires the most storage at my house mainly because of these so we supply all our own scaffolding for the jobs that we do and plastering doesn't require a lot of automatic tools or anything like that but it does require a ton of scaffolding planks and all of that so if you're looking into doing it yourself or venturing into maybe uh, bidding it for a family member i don't know um, you got to make sure you work that into your your bid but anyways let's get to it so here's a uh, what I mean about mesh. So the mesh gets embedded with the plaster. The mesh ends right here, you can see it. We need a corner bead and then mesh over the corner bead. But that yellow mesh is what you can see. So that goes over everything. I personally like to double mesh the butt joints. These joints right here, just cause those are the ones that tend to crack first. But uh, yeah, this is the, the base coat, this gets two. And then you pull on a primer, like a paint. Uh, let me get out of here. Soup. similar to taping when you're about to do the final uh, rather than sanding you scrape scrape all the trash all the globs that you see uh, what I like to do is to keep this nice and crisp and tight especially since there's no trim uh, around this particular project is we remask everything that way we take all the crap off make it tight put a nice little bead of caulking and then when we float you get a nice cream crisp lines so we did that on the fascia and everywhere 
We're getting ready to float out the soffit. Where's your... Here.